turned upside down when my husband gifted me divorce papers on Christmas morning. I got the most terrifying Christmas gift ever and it came from someone I didn't expect. My husband decided to wrap up a picture of my extramarital affair and leave it under the Christmas tree before vanishing without a single trace. This already sounds horrific, right? Well, the worst part is that he also hid divorce papers in another box. I have always loved Christmas all my life, but that day I cried myself to sleep. I am overwhelmed by his actions and I am deeply traumatized. I can't even make sense of what is going on in my life right now. The last thing I expected was to be ghosted by my own husband and get gifted divorce papers. I am a 27-year-old female from California and my name is Tamara. Please do not think the names mentioned here are real. I have to hide my identity and that of everyone I'll be mentioning. My runaway husband Luke is a 30-year-old male from California. We currently reside in California even though he is nowhere to be found as of now. This has to be the worst thing I have tried in my life. Truthfully, I hate the concept of bringing such a personal story here, but my circumstances have left me handicapped. These events took place exactly seven days ago. It's been one week since my husband ran away and left me in this house. I have not told a single soul what happened even though I am tempted to do so. The moment I saw the picture get wrapped, I couldn't bear to look at it, so I burned it immediately. I don't know how he got that picture and I don't know where he got it from. I don't want to think of the possibilities even though I already have an idea of what's going on. Yes, I have been having extramarital affairs. I'm deeply ashamed because my marriage is barely three years old. We're a young couple and our marriage is still new. But I ended up cheating on my husband. Though I am not proud of what I have done, I need to say that I do not regret it. Please don't start judging me already, there's a lot going on here. I'm not interested in boring you with any backstory. I'll just get straight to the point for now. I'll make another update to explain things if there is a need. We all know Christmas Day is the 25th of December. I am a great lover of Christmas and it's a day I look forward to every year. But this year's Christmas didn't quite end up good for me in any way. I celebrate Christmas from the first day of December because that way I get to have a good Christmas spirit in time. I know not many people believe in the Christmas spirit, but I am an exception. And no. Luke hates Christmas and that's the nicest way to put it. He doesn't like the concept of decorating the house every year during Christmas, even though he knows I love Christmas. But before we got married, we came to an agreement to respect each other's likes and dislikes. He doesn't like Christmas, so I make sure the decorations are not over the top. I keep it minimal and subtle. His sister told me there's no particular reason Luke hates Christmas. She told me that because I was confused when I learned that at first. I feared he had some kind of childhood trauma, but his sister explained that Luke just hated festivities altogether. That was a big relief because there was no way I was going to get married to someone with any childhood trauma. I don't have anything against it, but I'm not just ready to be overprotective of someone and take extra care of them. I like my personal space and independence. I don't want to have to take extra care of someone. This was my mindset years ago, and this is still my mindset years later. Eventually, we were able to get past differences before we got married. I made this point because I believe Luke chose Christmas Day to expose me because he knew how much I loved Christmas. That is a cruel man. I married a cruel man and this is the perfect example. And I started cheating on Luke six months after we got married so it's a surprise that he ended up finding out. I have a boyfriend or rather an affair partner. I think the short form is AP, right? His name is Steven by the way. My AP and I have been lovers since college but we lost contact after graduation. I met Luke and got married to him. Six months later, Stephen made an appearance again. He claimed to still be smitten by me. Of course, I hated the idea of cheating on my husband, but Stephen and I are literally soulmates. I've been crazy about him since high school before we officially started dating in college. After he left, I was literally traumatized. So when he came back and showed interest in me, I had no plans to shun him down. I accepted his offer and we started dating. He was aware of my marriage, but told me he wasn't bothered by that. So that's how our affair started. I was 100% sure that I had no idea of my affair. I just knew he couldn't be that aware. Luke and I literally have the same work schedule even though we work at different places, but I just thought he was completely clueless and I could keep fooling him for as long as I wanted. I never felt guilty while I was dating Steven. I had zero guilt because I believe I'm not doing anything wrong. I need to not use past tenses because Steven and I are still together. It's just that I've ignored him since Christmas Day after I got the biggest shock of my life. From the picture I found in the gift box, I just know that Luke has been safe from me cheating for two months now. I am 100% sure about that. The details of the picture will be revealed later. But from the details I'm the picture, I recognize that he caught me with Steven two months ago. That was such a long time ago, but Luke kept the truth to himself. He didn't think about sending me a message or trying to talk to me. He just sent on with his life and pretended like nothing happened. 
and I have been here thinking that I am fooling him and I am being so smart and careful, yet I was the fool. On the 1st of December, I started putting up the Christmas decorations like I usually did. Normally, Luke would help me even though he hated Christmas. But this year, he claimed to be too busy to help me with it. I was very angry, but I didn't think his actions were because he found out the truth. I genuinely thought he acted that way because he felt grumpy or something like that. <laughs> I didn't read it at all, but I guess that was a mistake. Let me make this clear, I didn't notice all these things back then. It's all just making sense after what happened on the 25th of December. I've had a full week to reflect and ask myself the necessary questions. I mean, anyone in my shoes would do the same because it's not every day your husband just disappears and then leaves you a naked picture and divorce papers as a gift. It's a very unusual situation and this situation has left me traumatized. Yes, you absolutely read that right. Stephen and I were naked in the picture Luke left, but that is a story for a later time. For now, I'll just fill you all in on what happened during the start of the month of December up until Christmas Day. This month has been extremely different, especially in my marriage. Today is the 1st of January 2024 and I'm updating you all now because it took me time to get the facts straight. Luke turned into a different person entirely. He would snap at me and just reject all my demands without a second thought. I do not spend my money on the house. I don't get why I should spend my money on the house. I am the woman and he's the man for a reason. I do work but I always keep my money to myself. This has been a recurring conversation and argument in my marriage with Luke. He hates the fact that I refuse to contribute to expenses and he always forces me to at least buy groceries or pay the light bill. Luke does give me an allowance every week yet he still expects me to take money out of the allowance for the house. I've never liked the concept of doing that but I tried once in a while just to avoid unnecessary arguments. But this month Luke seized the allowance entirely. He stopped giving me anything and any time I asked he either ignored me or told me there was no money at all. I'm not a fool and I could tell he was lying, but like I said, I love December and Christmas, so I decided to ignore his attitude and just have a great time. What added to my excitement was the fact that Stephen had taken a leave of work just to spend time with me. Well, that was what he told me. He claimed that he took time off work just for my sake, but now I've discovered that might not be true. It hurts me to know that's not true, but I'll also explain that later. Now let's get back to the pressing topic on ground. My marriage with Luke suffered more this month, but for everything we lacked in our marriage, I made up for with Steve. Even though my relationship with Luke wasn't stable, I didn't suspect that he knew about my affair with Steven. I felt like if he had a clue, he would confront me. I believe this theory because Luke is naturally confrontational, so I expected him to come up to me if he suspected I was cheating on him. This never happened, so I was chilling with AP and also preparing for Christmas. For me, I was having the time of my life, even though my marriage was going through its worst time. But let's face it, it's a known fact that if a person cheats, they do not care about their marriage at all. That was the case for me. I didn't care whatever happened with Luke as long as I still had Steven. That's what I thought, but on the 25th of December, I realized that wasn't the truth. A day before Christmas, Luke was home and this was unusual. Thanks to the nature of his work, he had to work on Christmas sometimes. But his office gave him an exception. I found that very suspicious because Luke was always extremely busy during Christmas time. But then again, I didn't care to ask because I was still upset that he stopped giving me allowance. I literally had to shop for Christmas all by myself with my own money. I woke up very excited on Christmas Day like I usually do. My family always holds a house party every year on Christmas Day. The house party is always something to remember. So that's one of the reasons I was super excited. Luke wasn't in the room when I woke up, but I thought nothing of it. I got dressed and then I went downstairs to make something to eat. After eating, I decided to take a picture of myself beside the Christmas tree. I did that every year before sending it to my family group chat. Luke normally took pictures of me, but since I didn't see him, I took a selfie instead. I just imagined that he had to go to work since he was less busy on Christmas Eve. That was the conclusion I came up with in my head. But after taking the pictures, I noticed the tree was different. I saw three gift boxes under the tree and that took me by surprise. First of all, I never put gifts there for myself ever. I felt that would be too cringe. Secondly, Luke had never put gifts under the Christmas tree for me. Whenever he wanted to give me a gift on Christmas Day, he usually just handed it to me. So that's why I found the gifts under the tree very weird and uncommon. So I decided to check it out to see what was going on. The first gift contained a note that simply read, I hate you and I'm gone. Merry Christmas. That was all the note said. Immediately I read it. I literally got goosebumps all over my skin. I was extremely angry just reading what he said. I was also very confused because I couldn't understand what led him to write such a thing. It was very confusing. 
First of all, we were already having issues and he was acting weird and rude. So for me to suddenly see gifts under the Christmas tree along with a note that read nothing but asterisk T, I felt extremely gaslighted. I decided to digest the note and move on to the next box because I was very impatient. I had to be fast because I had to attend the house party at my family house. Stephen also texted me that he wanted to see me so it was just too many activities lined up in one single day. The next box nearly gave me a heart attack. I swear that I'm not even exaggerating. I almost got on the floor and lost consciousness. It was a picture of me and Stephen. Yes, a picture of me and my AP. From the first note, I already knew the gifts were from Luke. So for me to see a picture of me and my AP in the next box, I just knew I had been busted. I knew it was over and there was nothing I could do about it. What's worse is that the picture is not something I would want my worst enemy to see. The picture is the most shameful thing I have ever seen. I had never felt guilty about cheating till I saw the picture. Stephen and I were naked on the bed doing you know what. We were intimate and I, a married woman, was acting like a single lady. I actually threw the picture on the floor out of horror because the picture genuinely terrified me. I couldn't believe that Luke had gotten his hands on such a picture. I started asking myself a lot of questions. I questioned how Luke got the picture and how he even knew I was cheating. I also questioned why Luke would want to leave the picture on gift boxes and keep them under the Christmas tree. I had to take deep breaths before grabbing the picture a second time and taking a better look at it. There was nothing flattering about the picture and I still regret everything I did there. I'm not exaggerating when I say my hands were shaking before I picked up the second box. I didn't know what to expect next. The happiest day for me turned into a horrific day. I do not think I can ever see Christmas or gift boxes the same ever in my life. Luke had to be the most cruel man on this earth. Why should he do that to me? What's his reason? I don't even know how he came up with such a disgusting idea in the first place. I understand his anger, but I do not understand how he chose to show his anger. It is not acceptable at all. The next box, I know you all are waiting for this one. What did I see in the next box? I saw divorce papers. I freaking saw divorce papers in that box. He also wrapped it up in a pretty Christmas ribbon, just like he did with the rest. I had to start calculating immediately because I knew divorce osiers weren't just something you woke up and ordered to be delivered to your house in minutes. It takes time to file for divorce and then get the papers. That was the perfect explanation I needed. Thanks to the divorce papers, I figured out that I had known about my affair for a long time and just to get his revenge on his own way. That still didn't make the discovery less terrifying. I was shaking and I couldn't even call anyone to tell them how I was feeling. I got three shocks in less than 20 minutes all at the same time. My life flashed before my eyes because I knew it was over for me and my marriage. I couldn't call my family because nobody would take sides with me. My mom and brothers hate Stephen and my sister once dated him. None of them know Stephen and I have anything to do with each other. So I just knew that there was no way I could run to them or tell them what happened. I had to take everything in all by myself and get myself together. It was the most difficult day of my life and I couldn't call Stephen and speak to him. I just didn't want to speak to him. I might have cared less about my marriage, but I just know I cannot divorce Luke. Luke is like my support system. Luke gives me an allowance every week. It's thanks to him I have a roof over my head and he's the one that found me a job. I cannot leave him or get divorced. At first I went to sleep, then started telling myself things were not so bad after all. I believed that Steven and I could continue our relationship and he would take care of me. Stevan does give me money once in a while and I know he's rich too. I believed that Stevan would have my back no matter what, so I Stevan would take care of me until I discovered that I have been living a lie. I explained how everything has been difficult, right? Well, it's true. I called Luke's phone number several times, but he didn't pick up. At some point, he even blocked me. I was getting crazy just thinking about everything that happened, yet I had no one to talk to. My family called to ask why I wasn't at the house party, but all I could do was make up excuses. After spending three days alone in the house with only confusion as my best friend, I decided to go meet Steven. I felt like he would be the best person to talk to because he was the one that understood my situation the most. So I did exactly what I wanted to do. But once I got to Steven's house, it was locked. I called him to ask what he was and he told me he was home. But I was at his house and it was locked. I didn't tell him that though, I just ended the call and went on to ask one of his neighbors who is usually friendly with me. He told me Stephen had been absent from his house for two days straight. That didn't make sense because Stephen told me he was at home. So do you see why I'm having second thoughts about Stephen? He's lying to me and he's probably cheating on me. I cannot rely on him. I need my husband back. My husband is not picking my calls and he has ghosted me. 
He has practically vanished without a trace, and I do not know what to do. I need help. How do I find him? How do I get him? I cannot get divorced. I need him back. Please help me. Update. Hi guys, it took eight months, but here is an update. Thanks for the comments, even though most of you cussed me out in the comments. My Christmas was a disaster, and so was my new year. The year brought me so much pain and betrayal that I'm left extremely shook with how bad everything was. While I was busy looking for love and turning to make sure I could save my marriage, I divorced Stevan for cheating on me. Yes, you read that right. So many of you predicted this in the comments, but I just refused to see the possibility of that happening. I guess I trusted him so much that I wanted to think the best of him. But that trust has ended up slapping me in the face. He has been cheating on me even after telling me I am the only woman I am his life. I feel cheated and used. Men are actually scums, and that's the nicest way to put it. He lied. That's it, he lied. I have been open about everything I did. I never tried to lie or pretend I wasn't married. He knew I was married and didn't have a problem with it. But he told me he was single. Now I got to know he has a girlfriend he wants to marry. Just after my marriage crashed? Isn't this just too much to take in? Let's forget about Steven and talk of my now ex-husband, Luke. That man must hate me so much. He came back after two months only to send me outside of our home and drag me to court for not signing the divorce papers. I begged him to reconsider, but he refused. The court case drained me of all the strength I had left. I tried to stop the divorce or even draw it out so I could have time, but none of it worked. Our divorce will be finalized in two months and it's still like a dream. Luke applied for a transfer in November after finding out I cheated. He didn't tell me about it. He resumed on December 29th and that's why he didn't go to work most of the days that led to Christmas. He's starting a life somewhere else and he has refused to tell me the location. He wants absolutely nothing to do with me and he has made that clear several times. I gave up on our marriage after seeing the dirty games both him and his lawyer played in court. Stevan, on the other hand, has refused to not marry his girlfriend. According to him, he wants to marry his girlfriend and keep me as his AP just like I did with him. I refused to be his second choice, so I said no. That man is just too vile and heartless. How could he try to do that with me? I can't believe the two men I thought I had in the palm of my hands have turned out to turn me into something else. I'm extremely devastated and I feel like I've been cheated badly. I risked it all for Steven, yet he turned his back away when I needed him the most. Luke hates me and has blocked me on all platforms. I'm still devastated, but I need to move on. I've been playing, but it's okay. I guess it's still my fault. I shouldn't have put all my eggs in one basket, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. Hi, everyone. I never imagined that I'll experience something so despicable and wicked. My wife tried to force me into signing the birth certificate of a child I later discovered was not mine. This woman watched me buy baby clothes and decorate the baby's room knowing fully well that the child was not mine. For the first time in my life, I regret my mother's decision to raise me and my brothers as gentlemen. If I was the strict husband with no respect for women, my wife would have never had the audacity to do this to me. How despicable and disgusting can some people really be? To force another person into accepting a child that is not theirs is just another level of wickedness. I took care of her all through her nine months of pregnancy, unknown to me that I'd been taking care of another man's child. I still can't help but continuously imagine what would have happened if I actually signed that birth certificate. She was trying to trick me into taking responsibility for a child that is not mine. How evil is that? Paying legal fees and child support for another man's child? I am most grateful to the people that stood by me and ensured the truth was out. I was very close to making the biggest mistake of my life. I hope that karma catches up with her, her affair partner, and every single person that was involved in this disgusting fraud. There is no amount of explanation that can justify what my wife tried to do. My name is Sebastian, and I am a 30 years old man from Argentina. I have been married to Amelia for three years now. Amelia is 27 years old. I am an architect, and I have been an architect for years. Before getting married to Amelia, I was practically married to my work. But after my marriage to her, I decided to spend more time with her. I've tried my best to be the best husband I can be. There's nothing I haven't tried to do in order to make sure my wife is comfortable and happy. It hurts me a lot to realize that all the efforts I have made have all been in vain. I used to feel guilty that my work took up most of my time, so I decided to make extra effort. My mother is a strict feminist, LOL. She's all about campaigning for women's rights and stressing the fact that women deserve care and respect. As a result of this, my mother has always instilled values that specify a woman's worth 
and she has tried her best to make sure my brothers and I respect women. When I got married to Amelia, my mother spent hours lecturing me and warning me to reduce the time I spent at work since I now had a wife. I listened to her and decided to step up as a man, but I never imagined that even with all the efforts I made, Amelia would turn back to stab me in the back like a freaking traitor. This just goes to show that no matter what you do, you can never truly please a woman. Your efforts count as nothing at the end of the day. On the 4th of March, 2022, Amelia showed me the pregnancy test and announced that she was pregnant. I felt a certain level of joy that I'd never really felt before. I've always been a man that loves children. I am the last child of my mother, so I never really had any little siblings who looked up to me. The realization that I was going to be a father and have a little child that called me Papa made me very happy. It felt like all the years of longing was finally going to yield something good. I don't think words can really describe how elated I'd been that day. In order to be perfectly sure, I took Amelia to the hospital so we could have a proper pregnancy test. Oh, I'd been so excited that I shook hands with all the doctors in sight and promised to buy them all dinner. I was not ashamed to show how happy that news made me. I grew up with a single mother who was scorned from her marriage with my late father. My mother told us stories of how our father abused her and made her life a living hell. She raised us to be the exact opposite of our father. After the doctors took a pregnancy test and we left the hospital, the results were ready two days later. The results confirmed that she was really pregnant. The doctors said the pregnancy was a high-risk pregnancy because Amelia was asthmatic. That meant that we had to be extra careful and I had to take very good care of her. I did not have a problem with that. Even when the doctor said high-risk pregnancies were white expensive, I did not think twice before footing the bills. When I talk about bills, there were a lot of bills. But for me, it was not a big deal because I was doing something for my unborn child. Amelia's health was also at risk, so her diet and everything was monitored. I had to hire a personal chef who was also a nurse so they could take extra care of her. All these things were not a big deal for me at the time. But now that I know I was tricked into spending a fortune on a pregnancy that was not mine, I hate Amelia with every fiber in me. Damn. I hope my mother can see what her gentle home training led to. I swear that if I was to get married to any woman again, I'll never be as nice and trustful as I was. I don't think I can ever trust any woman after what Amelia did to me. It's just not possible. Two months into Amelia's pregnancy, I got a call while I was at work. I was asked to come to the hospital urgently because of Amelia. I had to drop everything I was doing and I practically rushed to the hospital. Immediately I got to the hospital, my mother was there to scold me. She looked scared and tired. How could you leave your pregnant wife alone and let her work? She had an asthma attack and almost lost the baby. Her life was also at risk. Those were the exact words my mother said to me. The fact that I almost lost both my wife and my baby terrified me. But I had to ask Amelia why she went to work. I told her to stop working immediately she got pregnant, and she did. She did not go to work for two months. So, it was surprising for me to hear that she'd been to work. I was very angry because I knew that she indirectly put herself and the baby at risk. Emelia literally started crying after I scolded her. She said she felt guilty for just staying home and not working at all. Emilia days she did everything she did because she didn't want to become a liability to me. I was literally ambushed in front of my mother and brothers who were present. She made it sound like I was making her feel bad for staying at home. I was the one who even suggested she stopped working, but she said something completely different. I asked Amelia why she was overreacting and saying things that were not true, but it felt like I was wasting my time. She was crying, so anything I said obviously did not matter. My family pulled me to the side and asked me why I was making her work. I told them I didn't and that she was possibly overreacting because of the pregnancy hormones. I told my family to go back home and that I'd take care of everything myself. I waited till they left the hospital before I had a conversation with Amelia. I asked her why she did what she did in front of my family and lied. She started sobbing again and said she couldn't control her emotions. For a man like me who was not really used to seeing me crying, I gave her the benefit of doubt and believed that she was just tired because of the pregnancy hormones. I also felt like she was just trying to project what she was truly feeling. Amelia said she felt guilty for buying things when she was not earning anymore. I interpreted what she said as her being broke. So I decided to make a decision and try something. 
I didn't want her to keep feeling that way and keep putting the baby's life at risk. The doctor also said that Amelia had not taken her asthmatic drugs for a week. That was part of the reason why she had an asthmatic attack. I asked Amelia why she stopped taking her drugs, and she said they fell into the toilet by mistake. You guys won't believe that I just found out everything she said was a lie. Apparently, she was lying about the drugs falling into the toilet just so I could buy more drugs. I always gave her the money to get the drugs herself. But I have discovered from the pharmacy that she has not been coming to get those drugs. All the money I've been giving her was for something else. She has been lying continuously that her drugs kept falling in the toilet. Everyone assumes that pregnant women get clumsy and forget things easily, so it's never a problem when they misplace things. That's the same thing I thought that day at the hospital when she told me that she had misplaced her drugs. I gave her money to get another one like I usually did. Amelia made me feel very guilty that day because I felt like I made her feel like a burden. I decided to speak to one of my brother's wives. I wanted to ask her for advice and to ask her own perspective since she had already been pregnant before. She told me that it was normal for women to feel that way. She said that sometimes women who do not work during pregnancy feel bad because they know that they are not earning enough money to take care of themselves. She admitted that Amelia's case might be worse because her pregnancy was high risk and she knew that a lot of money was being spent. I took her word seriously and decided to try my best to make Amelia feel better. After speaking to my mother, she told me it would be nice if I started giving Amelia some amount of money for upkeep monthly. She said that would ease the guilt she felt. I didn't have a problem with that. I started giving her some monthly upkeep. The reason I obliged and gave her money monthly was because I didn't want her to work and have asthmatic attacks. That became the trend every month. Amelia stopped working and I hired a personal nurse that helped her. When Amelia was four months pregnant, I noticed some very odd habits. She started going out and coming back very late. I found that very weird because she was not usually like that during the first few months of her pregnancy. I didn't even know about this since I was busy with work. It was the personal nurse I hired that kept me updated on everything that had been happening. I was shocked to say the least. I was also very disappointed in Amelia because I never expected her to take the pregnancy for granted like that. I confronted her because it was important for me to know why she was taking the pregnancy for granted and putting herself and the baby at risk. She made up excuses and said that she wanted to exercise and go out because it was not easy for her to just stay in one place continuously. I didn't buy what she said. I made sure she stopped going out unnecessarily because I knew it could trigger her asthmatic attacks. The doctor even said it was not okay for her to go to playgrounds or recreational centers. They strictly told me that she must have a stay-at-home pregnancy. In order to make sure Amelia was not lonely and bored, I asked my brother's wives to visit her regularly. They had no problem with that, and they even offered to have cooking classes with her. None of their efforts stopped Amelia from sneaking out at night. I didn't understand why she was suddenly acting that way. It did not make sense to me. One day I came back from work early and decided to speak to Amelia. I wanted her to stop her immature habit of leaving my brother's wives alone at home and sneaking out. It was becoming a rampant issue and I needed to stop it. Trust me guys, it was not easy for me at all. Amelia was very good at playing the victim game. She tried her best to turn things around and make it look like I was the one trying to put the baby's life at risk. I don't know how to say this without sounding bad, but the pregnancy really frustrated me. It made me constantly angry for a very long period of time. Amelia practically made my life difficult. The fact that all those stress and unnecessary attitudes I had for another man's baby enrages me. I went through hell, but I endured it all and gave her the benefit of doubt. Is it the many medical bills, monthly money for upkeep, expenditure on designing a room for the baby, buying baby clothes and equipment, and buying medication every month? I spent a lot of money and I didn't think of regretting it back then. I didn't even have a single problem with it. I can't believe that woman made me go through all those things just because she wanted to kill money out of me. Emilia is the perfect definition of a shameless woman. She's a gold digger who used me for her vicious needs. Nine months. I took care of her for that long and she had the audacity to try to trap me with a pregnancy that was not mine. There was nothing anyone would tell me. The revenge plan I have is worth it. My mothers and my brothers advised me not to be too angry with her. They made me understand that after the pregnancy, everything would be back to normal and I would have my wife back again. 
I decided to listen to all of them since they had been in my position before. I decided to be patient with her and tolerate her vicious activities. I even stopped complaining about her suspicious movements and decided it was best to leave her alone. As long as she did not put her life and the baby's life at risk, I was perfectly fine with whatever she was up to. Emilia did not stop saying she needed money. I had to give her money for one thing or another. At first, I decided to just go with it and keep giving her money. But I stopped when I noticed that her desire for more money never stopped. I started asking myself what she was using all the money I was giving her for. Amelia did not feed herself and I paid for everything she needed. So I didn't understand how and why she was spending recklessly. I did not see her but anything at the house, so I began to wonder where all my money was really going. It was like an inner battle for a long time. I had to bring myself to accept that I would not be being inconsiderate and condescending if I asked her why she was spending recklessly. This is the part where I really think my mother is at fault. She made us think twice about everything, especially when it involved women. I don't think she realizes that not all women are worth the extra care and attention she taught us to have. Some women deserve absolutely nothing when it comes to life and care. Amelia is one of those women that do not deserve any form of love from a man. One needs to earn the respect they are so desperate to have. If you want respect from a man, you should be able to give him respect too. That's the only right thing to do. One day when I came back from work, I made the decision. We were eating dinner when I asked Amelia why she was spending recklessly. Amelia, why are you spending recklessly? You keep asking for money. What are you using that money for? Amelia looked shocked to hear me question her expenditure, and so she decided to play the pity game again. Why is it always a big deal for you to give me money? I stopped working because I am pregnant. How do you expect me to earn enough money for myself? That was what Amelia said to me. Prior to that day, I'd felt bad after she said those words. But on that particular day, I had enough of her constant tantrums. I was not ready to listen to her, and I made it clear that I would not be giving her more money. Amelia was very angry to hear me say that, but I didn't care. I'd made my final decision and that was it. After that day, I began to keep a close eye on Amelia and all the activities she was involved in. I wanted to make sure that I was not making a big mistake by letting her get away with the things she was doing. You guys won't believe what happened weeks after that day. I am still even shocked as I write this. I can't believe that there were signs that she was cheating on me, but I was too stupid to notice them. Everything was literally right in front of me, but I decided not to take the hints. But how could I have imagined that Amelia was cheating on me? I mean, she was pregnant and we were married. Of course, I believed I was the father of the child. When I saw another man at my doorstep, I didn't imagine that he was the true father of the child. It was a Sunday morning and we just got back from the grocery store. Amelia went upstairs to take a shower and I was, I'm the living room watching TV. Someone knocked on the door and I stood up to go check. I was not expecting anyone, but I still wanted to know who it was. Guys, I ended up seeing a guy who looked like he was in his early 30s at the door. He greeted me coldly and I was shocked. I did not think it made sense that a guy who was at my own doorstep thought it was right to give me the cold shoulder. He did not look like someone I knew at all and I did not recognize his voice. I asked him what he was looking for and he said he was looking for Amelia. I was surprised to hear him say that. At first, I was very skeptical because I wasn't sure of his identity. I told him to come back later. I wanted to speak to Amelia and ask if she knew him first, so I asked him to tell me his name. He said his name was Nathaniel. I asked what his relationship with Amelia was and he said he was her distant cousin. <laughs> I didn't recognize him as someone from our wedding, so I asked him to come back later. He agreed and left immediately. I waited till Amelia was out of the shower before I told her about her so-called distant cousin. You guys won't believe what Amelia did next. She quickly put on her clothes and rushed outside the house. I'm certain that she would have run if she was not pregnant. I was suspicious of the fact that she ran after Nathaniel. I decided to follow her because I needed to know where she was going. It was not safe for her to run about like that, especially with a high-risk pregnancy. By the time I got outside of the house, Amelia was already coming back. I asked her why she rushed out and she said she just wanted to tell him goodbye. I tried asking more questions, but she touched her stomach and said the baby started kicking. Lol, the baby started kicking my foot. I didn't say anything after that day. 
I decided to let sleeping dogs lie and wait till she delivered the baby. The fact that the pregnancy was high risk made me very nervous. I didn't want to risk my baby's life for anything. I was ready to iron out our issues after the pregnancy. Unknown to me that the pregnancy wasn't even mine in the first place. When she was seven months pregnant, I started suspecting the possibility that Amelia was cheating on me. I used to suspect that she was up to something, but I didn't really suspect anything till she was seven months pregnant. I started listening to her late night calls and muffled voices. All those signs only came after she stopped going out like she usually did. Maybe she stopped because she was already showing very well. I don't really know what made her make that decision in the first place. I noticed all the signs and I decided to take action. I was tired of guessing things and making up excuses for her when all she kept doing was take my efforts for granted. I noticed that Amelia started hiding to make calls. She stopped paying attention when I spoke to her and she grew paranoid constantly. I did not listen to my family when they said it was just signs that her delivery date was getting closer. I refused to accept that those were her reasons and I decided to take matters into my own hands. <laughs> Since she no longer left the house, there was no need to hire a PI. I was busy with work, so it was practically impossible for me to keep an eye on her myself. Even when I tried staying home and keeping an eye on her, she would notice what I was up to and go back to her usual self. Trust me when I say that it was a very draining period for me, but I didn't give up. I was determined to get to the bottom of everything. I decided to start from the pharmacy. She constantly told me she needed money for drugs. I stopped giving her money, but I could not stop giving her money for her medication. I knew that was important because I didn't want to put her and the baby at risk. Amelia knew this too, and that was why she decided to use that as her game plan. I got tired of buying medication almost every week. I knew nothing about asthmatic medications and maternity medications, but even I noticed that the constant purchase of those medications were suspicious. I asked her what pharmacy she usually got her drugs from, and she told me she got them from the pharmacy at the hospital. Amelia asked me why I was asking her that question and I told her that I just wanted to get myself some painkillers because I was tired from work. Why don't I get the painkillers for you? You're always busy with work, so I know that it would be quite stressful for you to go back and forth between your work and the hospital. Just leave everything to me, Emilia said to me. Guys, I knew what she was trying to do, so I respectfully declined her offer. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine on my own. It's not a hassle for me. I'll just go after work. That's how I was able to leave the house without raising any suspicions. Of course, I didn't really go to the pharmacy after work. I decided to go to the pharmacy even before I left for work. This is because I didn't want to give her any chance to do something stupid or cover up her tracks. When I got to the pharmacy, I asked them if Amelia had been coming to get medication regularly. At first, the pharmacy wasn't really ready to give me the information I needed even after I told them that Amelia was my wife but one of my friends worked there, so he assured them that I was her husband. I gave them the prescription Amelia claimed she usually purchased from the hospital, but they denied having any asthmatic pregnant woman come every week. Yes, they truly said that to me. I couldn't even believe my ears when they told me that. It was at that moment that everything finally began to make sense. I realized that Amelia lied to me all that time. All the time she told me she was going to get medication, and that her drugs fell into the toilet or got misplaced. She was just making an excuse so she could take money from me. That day, I accepted the fact that I was at least one step ahead of her. I knew she was indirectly stealing from me, so what was left was for me to find out the truth and why she was stealing from me. When I got home that day, I pretended like everything was fine. I didn't tell her about my discovery at the pharmacy because I didn't want to raise any alarms at all. It was just part of my plan to find out what she had been using all my money for. <laughs> Amelia seemed to have been worried about my visit to the pharmacy because she didn't waste any time before she asked me what I'd been up to. You can come back from work late. Did you end up spending time at the pharmacy? That's what Amelia asked me. Guys, that was literally the second clue I needed to know that Amelia had to be cheating on me. The question was just too suspicious, and I knew that meant she was trying to hide something if she was that worried about my visit to the pharmacy. Everything is fine. There was traffic on the road, so I had to deal with that. That's all I said to her before going to take a shower. Amelia seemed worried, but she didn't want to make it too obvious, so she stopped trying to disturb me. I knew why she was being nervous, but I pretended like I was not suspicious of her. 
There was not much I could do during that time because she was not really going out like she usually did. I had no choice but to patiently wait till she gave birth to our child. I knew that would be the perfect time to keep a close eye on her. Two weeks to Amelia's delivery date, I started seeing more proof that my suspicions were actually very right. I got to know that I was not being paranoid about keeping an eye on her at all. She was very demanding and rude months before her delivery date. But when it was two weeks to her delivery date, Amelia became very calm and caring. <laughs> it was like she was trying her best to get on my good side for reasons best known to her. I kept my cool and acted like there was nothing out of the ordinary happening. I was already suspicious of her, but the most important thing to me was my child, and that was the only thing I wanted to be focused on. I still had my suspicions about her, and I was getting ready to hire a private investigator the moment she gave birth to our child. I needed to make sure that I found out the truth. I didn't care if the truth meant she had been cheating on me. All I honestly wanted to do was know exactly what had been happening. One week before her delivery, I hired a private investigator and paid him half of the money. I had to take her to the hospital three days before the delivery because the doctors insisted that they keep an extra eye on her. They suggested that she had to be under critical care because her pregnancy was high risk and there was every possibility that something could go wrong. I did not have a problem with that because I wanted to make sure that my child was safe. I took her to the hospital like the doctors instructed and made sure she had the best medical treatment. There were lots of issues and I had to pay a lot of money because the baby's position in the stomach changed. That was not an ideal situation at the moment in time. One of the reasons why I'm still very angry even at this moment is because of the amount of stress I went through. I can swear that I made sure that I took perfect care of her because I cared for her and our unborn child. That is why it still breaks my heart that she watched me going through all that knowing fully well that she was with another man's child. Even with all the complications that were going on at the last minute, I did not give up and I made sure that she gave birth to the child safely. Giving up was not even an option for me at all, and I am grateful that my family stood by me through it all. I took a one week leave from work, but because of the nature of my work, I'm still going to have money deducted from my salary. That did not matter to me back then, but now it does. The fact that I have wasted all this just to have my heart broken is crazy. All the respect I had for Amelia is gone, she has to be the most vicious and conniving woman I've ever met in my life. She has made me lose respect for all women. I know it is wrong to judge the whole gender based on another person's wrongdoing, but it will definitely take me some time before I trust any woman again. I'm even very angry with my mother now because she's the one that always taught us to think the best about women. When I brought all the complaints to her, she told me I was being inconsiderate because I was not the one carrying the baby in my stomach. She told me that the hormones were the reason why my wife was acting out, but now it turns out that she was acting out because she was cheating on me. On the day of the delivery, it took hours before the child was born. The doctor said there were complications, but thankfully they were able to take care of everything. I was very relieved the moment I was told that my child had been born. It was a very big deal for me when I saw the baby because I felt like everything we had been through was worth the stress. Even my brothers and my mother were very happy because everyone knew just how much trauma the pregnancy brought us. I forgot all about the issues I had with Amelia and decided to sink in the moment. We spent one week in the hospital because Amelia had to heal, take her medications, and make sure that there were no problems that posed a health risk. Immediately we left the hospital, we had to start thinking of a name for the baby. I just realized that I forgot to tell you people what gender the baby is. Emilia to a baby boy. I honestly can't express the amount of joy I felt, but now I feel nothing because I know that I was betrayed. Since we have spent one week at the hospital, we had just five weeks to register the baby's birth. The law only gave us six weeks to register the baby's birth, so we had a lot of work to do. My friend already brought the birth certificate form over, and all we needed to do was sign. Emilia kept disturbing me and asking me to sign it fast. I wanted us to take our time since we hadn't named the child, but she was restless. She would bring the form and ask me to sign even before we gave the child a name. She said we could add any make and change it later. There were times when she would even start crying because I refused to sign it. We already spent one week and there was no time. I decided to name the baby Rodriguez. 
I spoke to Amelia about it and asked what she thought. She refused and said that she did not want that name for the baby. I asked her if she already had a name in my mind and she asked me to give her some time. The next day she left the house after saying that she wanted to get some groceries. I did not want her to go because I insisted that she still needed to rest, but she left anyway. I got suspicious and called my private investigator and asked him to follow her. He followed her for two more days after that because she kept going out. One day, my private investigator called me and asked me to meet him at a cafe. I was surprised because we usually only talked on the phone, but he insisted that what you had to say was very important and needed to be said in person. I got the biggest shock of my life when my private investigator told me he found out that the baby was not my child. He told me that after following Amelia, I realized that she was having an affair with someone else. He showed me videos of her going into a man's house, and there were even pictures of her kissing him. I was even more shocked to see her so-called cousin was the one that she was having an affair with. There were even videos of both of them making out in front of his apartment. I had all the proof I needed to know she was cheating, but I did not understand why he claimed that the child was not mine. You know that situation when the truth is right in front of you, but you are scared to believe it because you know just how much the truth might hurt you. I was in that same situation that day because I was scared of believing what my private investigator told me. I even accused my private investigator of not being efficient. I told him that maybe she was cheating after she got pregnant with the baby. But my private investigator told me that he looked into the man and the neighborhood he was living in and found out from some of his sources that Amelia was a regular in the neighborhood. Hey, man. Apparently, Amelia used to spend the night with him anytime I went on business trips. I decided to conduct a DNA test secretly to find out the truth. One day when I noticed that Amelia was out of the house, I invited our family doctor so you could take the DNA sample from the baby. After four days, the doctor told me that the DNA confirmed that the baby was not mine. I practically lost my senses. It felt like I was running mad. I had to go to my family and tell them everything I discovered. It was hard for them to believe it, but the DNA test was right in front of them. My brother advised me not to say anything yet and that I should hatch up a plan. When I got home that same day, Amelia told me she decided to name the baby Antonio and that all we needed was my signature. I refused to sign the birth certificate and told her I was aware of all her lies. I told her I knew that the baby was not mine. Amelia was shocked and she tried to deny it, but I showed her the DNA test. You guys won't believe how she suddenly got scared and threatened to kill herself if I didn't sign the papers. I'd seen things like that only in movies, but I saw it in real life that day. Amelia decided to act like a mad woman. She went as far as grabbing a knife from the kitchen and placing it in her veins. I didn't care if she died and I told her that. I refused to sign the papers and left the house. When I came back hours later, I came with my brothers who helped me pack Amelia's things outside the house. She was nowhere to be found when I came back and the baby was missing. Her sister came to the house to take her things from the garden the next day. I have not seen or heard of her since then. I'm still traumatized and hurt that the baby is not mine, but I'm glad I found out the truth in time before she forced me to sign the birth certificate. I plan on filing for divorce soon, but I need a good lawyer first. I don't want to pay her a dime in divorce settlement. So guys, that's how I got the worst experience of my life from my own wife. I plan on getting revenge, but I need time to understand everything that happened. Our journey ends here. Goodbye. And thank you all for reading this life-changing experience of mine.